how to create edutainment video content. I'm gonna cover three core things. I'm gonna spend most of it in the third bucket. The first one is I just wanna make the case as to why more people should be creating edutainment videos. I know when I say that word, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not creative. I don't do acting. I'm not an influencer. Like you don't have to be, right? So I'm gonna break that down, but I wanna make a strong case for it. I've done these the last three years and have, been, have had a tremendous impact on my business. And then I've watched other customers make them and it's had a tremendous impact on their business. The second thing is I just want to debunk a couple of things about edutainment. What is it? What is it not? There's a lot of confusion around that. And then three, break down how to make them. How do you actually make them so they get engagement, they actually convert to customers, and that they work for your business? Okay, so I'm, and by the way, edutainment is entertaining while you educate. So it's fusing an educational or motivational message, and you combine that with entertainment, and that is edutainment, Okay. There's three main reasons. There's probably a lot more than this, but there's three core reasons that you would wanna create edutainment videos. The first one is it's the easiest way to break through on social media. So when you think about all the educational content that's in the feed, whether it's text post, picture post, videos, a lot of it is like a title up top and then people talking about a message, delivering something that's educational or informative to an audience. Now that's great. I do a lot of those too, I'm not hating on that. I think that's definitely part of the content strategy. But when you can come out and you can entertain somebody, let me let this person in. When you can come out and bust through the noise and actually start entertaining people as they're getting educated, well, now you're standing out. If there's 100 videos out there, you're probably the one, maybe two videos out of 100 that are actually doing edutaining. So it's a great way to break through the noise. I think about me when I joined LinkedIn and really got serious with it late 2019, early 2020. I would not have broken through as fast as I did and been able to build the business I did and then quit my job because of it if it wasn't for me doing edutainment. Like I just know that for a fact, for a fact. It was how I separated myself. It was how I communicated to clients that I was unique and different to work with. It allowed me to express points and messages in ways that I wouldn't have been able to do through educational content. So it's huge for that. Number two, it creates a strong buy-in and followership from your audience. So when you can get someone to smile and laugh and potentially cry or get them bought into your message in an emotional way, they are more bought into you as the creator. And that's part of kind of the relationship that we're trying to build with our audience. So you'll, you'll just build a bigger followership or a stronger followership, I should say. And number three, it converts and it gets high engagement. Then look at a lot of the videos out there, some of the highest performing ones, video wise, or have some element of edutainment in them, entertainment mixed with education. So for those three reasons, and if you think about what it conveys to your customer or potential customer, think about the customer watching the video, because I've had some people be like, oh, if I had humor in my content, aren't people gonna think that I'm a goofball? Like they're not gonna take me seriously. They're not gonna buy from me, Alex. And I'm like, yes, they are. First of all, Albert Einstein said that Humor is just intelligence having fun. And I really believe that. If you can create something that, that is humorous, that is, gets people to laugh and smile and there's a good message behind it, to me that shows that you're creative and you've got some intelligence to be able to put that together, right? So it, it showcases when you put out edutainment that you're an expert in your field because obviously you're talking about something that is helping educate them or motivate or inspire them. So you know your craft, otherwise you wouldn't be able to package it up in a message like that. You've got creativity. What if you, if you study companies and watch and listen to the polls that come out on what organizations need most right now? What is like the one skill set or ability? It's creativity. It's, it's super high on the list in terms of what employers and companies look for. So the fact that you have creativity, you're demonstrating that in the video, that, that, has, that has merit, right? And then the third thing is you're just fun to work with, which who, who doesn't want to work with fun people, right? We don't want to work with uptight people that are just a, a pain in the ass to work with. So that's my case, right? And I, I, again, I've also lived this life and I've created hundreds of edutainment videos. For a while, it was like literally all I created. Like you would be hard pressed to find an educational only video for me. And then I leaned into the educational stuff more. And then again, I found myself in that position where I was like, it's either gotta be one extreme or the other. It's gotta be whole, like 100% educational or 100% edutainment. And then I found that middle ground and I was like, oh shit. Like there's, there's something here, right? When we get, bring those two closer together and it also makes it easier where anybody can create these. There's no excuse. 
You don't necessarily need a certain type of editing. You don't necessarily need a green screen. You don't have to be a world-class actor or rapper or any of that stuff. I'm none of those, right? So I found a way to kind of help teach this to, to anybody that would want to make these videos. Let's debunk a couple quick things, then we'll move into how to create these. And then of course, at the end, we'll go into our uh, Q&A. Let one more person in. Okay. So I have to cover this just because whenever I mention edutainment, people get confused with entertainment and they're not really sure what it is. Just a couple quick things like edutainment is not random, silly videos that are just done for pure entertainment. Is there a place for that? Sure. But it's not edutainment. The reason it's edutainment is because it has an educational element to it as you're entertaining. Like I have people that do like the seven to 10 second videos on TikTok and they're like, I'm doing more edutainment videos. And I'm like, that's like showcasing why something is silly in your industry is not necessarily educating the prospect and shifting their perspective. You're just highlighting something that's silly that happens in the industry, which again is fine to do. It's just not how I'd bucket under edutainment. The second thing is that sharing videos with that other people have created like the viral videos and now you're saying, oh, I'm trying to entertain or edutain my audience. So I'm sharing these viral videos that other people created. Like that is a horrible strategy. No one's connecting that back to your business. You're just trying to go viral and people know it, right? So it, it really should come from you, not to say you can't play off other people or collaborate with other people, but it really should have your core message at heart. All right, so let's get into how to make edutainment videos, okay? I wanna cover first, I get asked a lot about, and even last time I think someone asked me, what's your process on how you create the edutainment videos? And the first thing I think about is this. What is, actually there's two things that I think about in the beginning, because when I think about an edutainment video, there's really two components. One is the message, and then one is the concept or delivery, right? So there are times, and you could, you could pick either one first, but it needs to have both elements. Here's what I mean. I may be talking to a customer or a prospect or on calls all week long, and I may be hearing over and over again, I can't think of ideas for content. Like I just, you always got these videos coming out. I can't think of anything. And I'm just sitting there like, what should I talk about in my content? I may say, all right, that's a good, I need to address that question, answer that question in a piece of content. That's my message, right? And so I'm gonna kind of show somebody how to actually come up with more content ideas. Now I need a concept that's gonna be entertaining that makes that an edutainment video. So on the back end, I'm gonna create a scenario where this is funny, where maybe like the person can't think of anything and they're super pissed off and then they think of something ridiculously out of left field and it's funny and then they get back and so there's a message behind it. That's how I would take a message and then add the concept to make it edutainment. The other way you could do it, which this happens to me all the time, is you may be watching a show, a TV show, a movie, you may see another creator that creates something, and you may say, that's a funny, that's a cool concept. Let me now take that concept and let me fuse a good message that ties back into my business objectives and goals, right? So an example for that would be the Top Gun of social media that we did a while back, where basically I just saw the movie Top Gun. I liked the movie, it was a lot of fun. I was like, man, there's definitely a video in here that we can create that would be for social media and we would make it fun, but we would also make it highly educational too and teach our customers something. Okay, that's gotta be there. Because if you think about the purpose of creating content, why are you creating content in the first place? And a lot of people do say like brand awareness and it's this and I'm trying to educate, I'm trying to win clients. And you know, at the end of the day, there's three types of content that you're trying to create if you wanna actually turn that into customers on the back end for output. And to me, it's the why content, which is you need to talk about why doing what you're trying to provide matters to their business. Example, if I'm talking about, here's how you record videos, here's how you make better videos, here's how you do this, here's three-step process to do this, cool. But if they don't understand how video actually impacts their business at a deep level, and if they don't understand that content's actually the reason they're gonna hit their revenue goals in 2023, then the how stuff just doesn't really land, okay? So that's the why content. The how content is now you're going to teach them the point of view or the why that you just provided in the first place. So you're out there kind of telling a story. For me, it's, hey, you need to treat video content like your 24 seven sales rep, right? Video is, should be at the focal point of any business right now, small, medium, or large. That's my story, that's my narrative. But I can't just go out there and say that. I also gotta teach my potential customers how to start doing it, right? And eventually they're probably gonna ask for help and who you think they're gonna come from. So the how is me teaching them strategies, tactics, techniques. I'm giving away the free information. I want them to go try. 
They're either gonna try, be successful, and then be even more bought into me because they're like, man, this dude was talking about all this video stuff. I started doing it, he showed me how, and now we're actually wanting a couple clients. If they wanna level up, they'll come to me. Or they'll go try it, and at least they have the frameworks now and the blueprints, and maybe it doesn't work out, but they can honestly say, yeah, I mean, we honestly didn't follow the strategy like we should have, and then again, that's an opportunity to work with me. So that's the how content. The third kind that you need to be creating is the relationship building content. That's where edutainment and emotion comes into play from a content standpoint. That's where you, you do want to share some personal type things about yourself. I'm not talking private, like what you're going on in your personal life, that deep, dark secrets. I'm not saying that. But you need to show, showcase a personal side of you. You need to connect with your audience from a human perspective, right? And so that could be sharing personal journey stories. It could be creating edutainment type videos where you're getting your audience to laugh or smile or reflect or cry or whatever it is, right? That stuff's important. And then on the back end too, being able to engage in the comments and again, connect with them on a human level, respond to DMs, that type of stuff is all part of that three-part equation, okay? When we do that, on the back end, we get inbound leads, we get customers, and we get raving fans. All right, so that's how I think about the messaging and the concepts, okay? I'm happy to answer questions at the end on this. Number two, script or no script? I get asked all the time, like, do you script out your videos or you just like let it fly? If it's a complex, like advanced type edutainment videos, then of course I'm gonna script it because it's just way too hard to go off the top of your head if you've got like different characters and settings and you've got a big story that you're trying to unfold in the video, you probably wanna script it. When I script it, I'm reading a few lines. I'm not reading a teleprompter. You could, but if you're not really good at reading that or your eye contact's off, it's gonna look terrible, right? So what I personally like doing is just almost like an actor. I kind of rehearsed a couple lines I deliver those lines and then I'm able to pause, look back down in my notes, I just use my notes app, and then come back up and deliver the next few lines, right? So pretty much I'm following script, but I'm ad-libbing and adding stuff as I go, okay? Most of the time for the beginning, the beginner stuff and the intermediate stuff, you don't really need a script, right? And I, I really wouldn't recommend it in the beginning for anybody creating videos. I just think it's like, you're gonna get in your own head, you're gonna try to read it, you're probably gonna sound robotic, and it's just not gonna work. So the best thing you can do is just create like a one sentence hook. How are you gonna start the video off? Because your hook is 90% of the performance of the video. If you don't get that right, you're finished. So what are you gonna say in the first couple seconds? And then maybe just a couple bullet points. And if you're given this, if you're providing this information or talking about the subject, chances are you're an expert in the space. So you'll probably be able to rattle off some things, right? And then the third thing I would do is then once I'm done filming, then I, I either trim myself or I'll timestamp it. Um, you can do this yourself or have somebody else that supports you do it. And then I'm gonna send to editing. Obviously you could edit yourself, but for me, you know, we've got the editing team because I wanna spend my time doing other things, okay? So that's kind of the process. Um, so there's three ways to do this, right? I'm gonna go over beginners, intermediate, and then advanced. So literally anybody can do this, okay? Beginners is, there's a method I call the sprinkle method. And it's, I talked about it in a video, I think last week. It's a super simple method that allows you to just sprinkle in some entertainment along with an educational message. So an example like this is like, I filmed a video the other day, last week, and I was talking about running out of content ideas. And I was like, you ran out of content ideas and now you don't know what the hell to talk about. And all I did is I had my MacBook and I was like showing frustration, which I know that my customers or potential customers feel that frustration. So again, this is emotions I'm trying to, dr uh, trying to drum up now. And I just grabbed my computer and we did a slow-mo of being, being like, mother, right? Just like pissed off or frustrated that I couldn't think of any type of content ideas. Then I went into like my spiel, here's what you're gonna do about it. So you can see just one simple add-in, right? Where you're just kind of highlighting how someone might feel about it, right? Like you're talking about cold calls and like, aren't you tired of just constantly making cold calls and no one answers or the answer and they hang up? And then you show like someone with the phone, like, hello, hello, you know, like, so you can add in those little bitty things throughout the video. You can do one, two, three, five. It doesn't really matter, but they're super easy to do. Another example was, your customers are doing, I did a video a while back where I was like, your customers are doing more research and consuming more content than they are spending time with a salesperson. What does that mean for your business? 
more cold calling. No, I'm just kidding, right? And I just add in like a quick, I know it seems simple, it's just like a quick little one-liner kind of mini joke. It's not even that funny, but it just breaks up the video. And I'm telling you guys, I think smiling on camera and laughing on camera is one of the most underrated aspects of video content. I actually think it, it, it triggers something in the human mind that gets people more connected to you. If you're constantly like this, delivering your message and constantly on camera like this, People just feel that stiffness, right? They don't feel the emotion. So again, we're trying to bring out the emotion in the content. That's really what edutainment is. So that's the sprinkle method. I would also say with the sprinkle method, it could be something as simple as changing your surroundings. So having a little bit of a unique background or you're out and you've got some cool scenery, that's an easy way to sprinkle in some entertainment because our eyes, we're humans, we're visual creatures. When we see something, we're like, oh, that's cool. Where's that person at, right? That shit matters. Also coming into the camera angle, like there's videos you'll see of mine now where if you notice I'm walking into the camera as I'm saying it, like here's why you think you're da da da, right? And so even that little element of me just walking into the camera frame or being a different angle, that's the sprinkle method too. Small tweaks, big gains. The second one is the intermediate, right? So now we're getting a little bit more advanced. A couple good ones for this is gonna require a little more work, but it's still anyone can do it. The one I love the most is the poke the bear method. So I call it the poke the bear because it's kind of like you're poking the customer almost like, yeah, and people are like, I don't want to make fun of my customers and my content. I'm like, no, poke fun at them. Like absolutely do it because you know what? If they're so offended that they don't want to consume your content or work with you, then those weren't the people you want to work with anyways. But chances are they're going to smile, laugh and go, God damn, that's exactly what we're doing. This is ridiculous. Like we need to make a change, right? And ultimately that's what you're trying to do with your content with the why stuff and the how stuff, you're trying to create change. And then they're gonna to come to you when they want help with that change. So I did a video just Monday, actually yesterday, where I was like, the reason your company content isn't converting, here's why. And then I did that whole thing of like, you know, com most companies talk too much about their company. And they're like, our company is so great. We were ranked number one. And it was just like a, a little mini skit within the video. And it kind of poked fun at like companies that do that type of stuff. All they do is talk about themselves. All they do is highlight how perfect they are and how, how much they're winning and nobody cares. It doesn't convert, right? So another intermediate style that I think is simpler if you don't want to get on camera as much, this is a great one, is doing vlog style videos. And so like example, before I set up all this equipment, I was recording kind of the behind the scenes and I've done a ton of these but I'm gonna record like, and I'll, and I'll have the opening hook be something like, here's how I turn one live session into 100,000 people seeing it. So instantly it grabs attention. All I'm gonna do is spend 20 seconds showing this, showing the fucking ring light, showing the mics I use, the setup. People are very curious about that stuff. I get questions every single video. How do you guys edit? What do you use for this? What's the mic you're using? What's the ring light? Your customers are curious about how you do stuff too. How do you set it up? What does it look like? Why do you use this versus this? And so it's basically just answering their questions, but in a kind of a fun vlog style that is entertaining as they get educated, okay? Then we got advanced, which many people will never try this and that's totally fine. It's gotta be like, is this your thing or not? I would encourage you to test and try and figure it out. But hey, if you never wanna create these, you got the beginners and inter intermediate either way. But the advanced are things like personification. One of the highest performing types of content is personification. When you can take two things or three things or one thing, you can take anything that's non-human and you can bring it to life and make it human and give it human attributes, I almost guarantee that will perform well in the feeds if you do it enough times and you execute well. An example, LinkedIn meets TikTok. Two things that are not human beings, but my audience is familiar with both and both of them have attributes that I just created in human element of them. So I, I brought LinkedIn to life and I was like, LinkedIn, hi, I'm LinkedIn. I'm the guy that's, you know, in the suit and tie, the whole thing, right? Even though it's not really LinkedIn anymore, but that's what people think a lot of times. And then TikTok was more casual, hat backwards. It's like, what's up LinkedIn? What are you doing here? And then they go back and forth and there's just some dialogue back and forth. But the key with the dialogue is there's actually the consumers learning something along the way. They're learning that, oh, they, there's good organic reach on LinkedIn and TikTok. They're learning that, oh, LinkedIn has this, TikTok doesn't. TikTok has this, LinkedIn doesn't. But there's so much banter back and forth and humor that people are just like glued into the screen. Those are some of my highest performing videos, by the way. So that's personification. You could take anything and personify it, 
right? So like if it's like sales versus marketing, it could be this camera versus a bat zoom call, a zoom call versus a quality camera. Like you could person use personification in almost everything. Your CRM versus, you know, something else. Like people love that stuff. The, another example that I'd say for the advanced level is stories or skits. Now, this is where you're going to actually create a story from scratch and you're going to write a script out. And this could be anything. It could be inspired by something you saw. It could be something you totally made up. But this is an entire skit that you're creating from scratch. So again, that's why it's advanced. I think about the LinkedIn lurker. I created a LinkedIn lurker. You guys may have seen that video where I kind of was in the forest and I was like talking about how LinkedIn lurkers are a lot of my customers in the beginning where they kind of lurk, they don't engage, they don't create content, but they're just kind of watching. So I made them almost like they're like a native animal in the wild. And I was like, shh, hold on, don't move. We got a LinkedIn lurker over here. And I created this whole kind of funny one minute thing, but it actually highlighted some of the things on why they shouldn't stay being a lurker. So it was educational along the way, but it had some humor in it. Okay, I've done like the wrapping CEO, sales versus marketing, like, there's a ton of different, co the, when companies start creating content and I kind of riff on the two people in the, in the company, a ton of things you can do, but that's more of the advanced level. Okay, so that's edutainment. Let's get to some questions now. Hopefully we got some good questions after going through all this. If I may, all right, uh, great stuff. I missed the last couple episodes, so I'm glad to be here and uh, thank you for everything you do. Of course. Uh, quick question about uh, when you're developing creating an online course when you have multiple modules and lessons, whatever, it's typically longer than the one minute type of video. It's like five minutes. How do you maintain that, that interest and, and that spark, you know, throughout the, that time length video? Yeah. So the question was, if you're talking about videos for online courses, which I don't have any at the moment, but I, I did those very early on how do you maintain a certain level of entertainment or edutainment throughout the video, right? If it's five minutes, 10 minutes. The biggest difference I would say between these two is one is a social media video where people are not expecting to watch you know, your piece of content that day. They're just scrolling, trying to find something that they're interested in. So it has to be a way different, it has to be more engaging, more entertaining, edutaining versus if someone bought a course, they've now committed to you that they're gonna sit down and listen and watch and they wanna consume that specific information. So I would say that it has to be less engaging than a social media video, right? Does that make sense? So like I, I wouldn't, you know, I had a course for a while years back and I never put in so much edutainment in the course because I was like, I mean, it would be a good thing to do it. I think it's never a bad thing if you can infuse some entertainment in the course. But I would say that it's less important than it is in the social media feeds because, again, the social media feeds, the, the social media feeds, no one paid money to go now consume the content. Just like if I'm talking to people about creating videos, people show me, companies show me videos like, hey, would this work on social media? And I look at the video in the first five seconds is like them highlighting like a scenery and this and it's kind of slower. I'm like, that's the audience has gone after one second. Like you have no chance. Zero. And they're like, well, what about like shows and TVs, and Netflix and that kind of stuff? They all start off like they don't start off anything crazy in the first couple of seconds. I'm like, yeah, because they've committed to watching what they're going to watch. So now they're sitting down. They're saying, I'm going to watch this. If you go into a movie theater, you're not like two seconds. OK, it wasn't interesting. I'm out. No, like you understand. I've committed an hour and a half, two hours of my time. I've watched the trailer, which the trailer is the social media content. That's your 30 seconds, one minute loop or um, video edutainment to get people to watch the long form content or commit to going to the podcast or going to your YouTube channel and consuming more of the long form content, which is gonna be the movie. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, cool. And if also um, you mentioned in the intermediate uh, strategies um, or level yep. uh, vlog style videos, what, what exactly, do you mean by that? What is vlog? Yeah. Yeah. What's the vlog style video that I mentioned in the intermediate? It's the easiest thing you can do. And you can, if you go back to my TikTok page, there's a, there's quite a few of them. But the example I used was like, if I just take the behind the scenes of what I'm doing here, and again, I could do a voiceover top and it could be a 20 second video, a 30 second video. They're super easy to create. They do take a little bit of time because you got to piece together some clips. But here's an actual example. I would say, here's how I turned one live session into 100,000 people seeing it. 
And then I would show the setup. I used my smartphone, I used the Logitech, I used the lighting on both sides, the ring light, da da da. This is what I did. We talked for 45 minutes about how to create edutainment content. I then chopped that, time stamped that up, chopped it up into micro clips. The long form went on YouTube, the podcast, the short form clips. They then went to LinkedIn and TikTok. We got eight to 10 clips or five to 10 clips, whatever it is. And that became 100,000 plus views. Right, so I would just show kind of what I'm doing as I'm narrating over top with the voiceover. Got it, okay, so it's not necessarily continuous, it's segments, it's micro clips pieced together to show whatever it is you're trying to. Right, capture. the other thing you do, which, which I try to do now, every, everywhere I travel now, I try to create like a mini vlog and do a voiceover top. So I'll take a picture of me at the airport, you know, a couple seconds, the plane taking off, a couple seconds, me landing, meeting somebody talking about, but there's a voiceover that has a story behind it. That's the key, right? You've got to sell the story. So if there's not a compelling story or hook on there, it's just a bunch of footage that you put together, but you can create a lot, you can do a lot of different stuff with the voiceover. Once you get the clips together, you just voice over what you want the story to be. I bet you sometimes uh, conjure stories up from uh, that you didn't have any original initial intentions it kind of just right to you with the, the the video material you have exactly so like i went out to go see my my i started our second business co-founded it with another guy in north carolina named pete i posted about today and i recorded a lot of footage that i'm going to chop up i could make that video about all types of things i could make it about entrepreneurship not being lonely i could be making it about starting my second company and what that's like i can make it about how far i've came the last 3 years and what i've learned i could talk about the failures and mistakes i've had in entrepreneurship and how what i learned from it like ton of different things that i could use that footage and it would still make sense if the voiceover narrated it sky's the limit yeah it's it's a really powerful method honestly i encourage everyone to try that one of the most viral videos on TikTok, like the style, and even me, it, it hooks me in. And I, I don't even care that much about cooking and stuff, but you guys may have seen them on TikTok where like they'll slap down meat and it's like one second, half a second per frame. Meat, salt, pepper, something else, frying pan, comes out, they cut it, and they serve it on a plate. And it's like, oh shit, everything happened in like 10, 15 seconds. It's so entertaining. Like you want to watch it again, but you just learned how to make something. So that's edutainment, right? Now, depending on what you sell, it's easier, more challenging to do that type of stuff. But either way, my point is you can create that style. And I'm not saying, obviously, with all of this, guys, I'm not saying only do edutainment and only create this. You need to create some educational stuff where you're talking, of course. But mixing these in is really, really good, especially for you know that third piece, the why content, the how content, sure, but also the relationship building content where people get to see a different side of you or a more entertaining side or more emotional side. They get more bought in. Good question. Alex. Yeah. I know at the beginning, and I mean, that's how I got hooked up on you, hooked on you up. Yeah. You were doing, you said that's literally all you did was the edutainment videos. So knowing how long that takes, were you putting out, and I know you're saying you should put out content often, often, often. Were you doing one a week, one every two weeks? How many of those were you doing in a week? Yeah, so for a while, I, and looking back, I'm like, I'm not sure how I was doing this. Honestly, I don't know. Because I was working a full-time job, and I was, um, this is in 2020, 2020, early 2020, I was working a full-time job, <laughs> single dad, and then I was putting out three edutainment videos every week, and I was doing my own editing. Now, at that point, I really, I was more like a solopreneur. I didn't have as many clients, like, so I had less responsibilities from that side. But I was doing, you know, t t minimum two, but usually three a week. What I do now and what I would recommend for anyone listening here, if you're like, how much, how many, should, that's a great question, Mike, too. How many should I make? You know, beginners, advanced, intermediate, like how many of these videos should I be making per month? And I would say the beginner stuff, the sprinkle method, I would try to infuse, like I'm trying to infuse those in almost every video now because it's so easy, right? And it doesn't take much effort. And some of the stuff I can add in post-production, right? So that stuff you could do with almost every video. The intermediate and advanced stuff where you're having to come up with a little bit more concepts, potentially a script. I mean, if you can pump out one or a couple of a couple of month, I think that's pretty That's a great place to start. Right. And it depends on how much content you're putting out as a whole. But if you can do I'm telling you, they're so memorable. Like I'll have people two years ago, two and a half years ago. Like, I remember you did that one video like sales versus marketing rap battle. I'm like, that was literally over two years ago. Like, but, and, I'm, and then I'll ask them, like, can you remember any of my text posts or any of my educational video? And they'll be like, nothing comes to mind, right? So it's so freaking memorable that if you did one a month or two a month that were highly edutaining, it would stick. 
like it would. And then you mixed in some of the beginner stuff throughout the month. That's the, I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah. My, my goal is to do one a week. So if I, if I, that's great. A month, then that's good. I know sometimes it's tough to film it all. But yeah. Okay, so that's good to know. Yeah. I mean, for a long while, once I got past the three edutainment videos a week, I would, I got to a place where I was doing one every Monday. Right. So it was like every single Monday, you guys remember every single Monday I had an edutainment video and they were like pretty elaborate, honestly. All of them had a script, all of them had like editing the whole shebang. And um, now I'm creating more content. And because I'm doing more of the beginner and intermediate stuff, I'm doing less of just the advance, but I'm creating more edutainment throughout my entire content strategy. So that's how I've shifted where I've like, it's still edutainment. I've just shifted where I'm getting more and it's at different levels which I like because again, people can watch my video where it's super elaborate and they can be like, cool, but that's it's an Alex thing, it's not like me. Well, now they can see the beginner stuff and go, shit, I could do that. Like there's, there's nothing special about what that guy's doing. It's just like a he just added a couple things in. So that's that's been the big shift for me is I've just changed the way I look at edutainment. And as for length, less than two minutes, I mean, I know it depends, but when you get into the yeah. big edutainment ones, the the time flies by. You like, it oh, does. <laughs> yeah. So, I, minutes, yes. Is that what you found to be the sweet spot? I know if it's really good, they'll continue to watch it. But. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so what's the time limit for a good edutainment video? It definitely does depend for sure on how good it is and how much audience buy-in you already have, right? Because that matters too. But I think a sweet spot, and I always said like the, the art of making good edutainment videos is you, I could look at a script after doing it for a long time and making a lot of bad ones and a lot of good ones. I could look at someone's script that was two, three minutes and I could break it down to a minute, right? So that's kind of the art of doing it for a while. Like you just can simplify that message so well and it's actually more powerful versus dragging it out and having a lot of periods where like, oh, this is kind of slow or too many pauses or that scene wasn't necessary. I imagine it's probably like a director would come in be like, that scene's out, this scene's in, let's switch this up. Like it's you just, from experience, you learn it. I would say to answer your question directly, I think one minute is a great sweet spot. And I think people will commit to one minute and you can fit a lot in one minute. And I think if you wanna to go to a minute and 20, that's fine. If you wanna to go to 45 seconds, that's fine. I probably would try to stay away from going two minutes or more, unless you're really good or you've got a lot of buy-in. But again, it's not to say a two minute and a half or three minute video couldn't crush it, it could. I just would probably recommend, especially in the beginning, sticking around that one minute mark. I have also learned too from doing hundreds of these and teaching it that we try to sometimes think that we gotta include so much in one video and you don't. And in fact, when you try to include so much in one video, you actually make it more confusing and you overload the viewer. And so they end up not wanting to watch the, the full video and not consume any more. When you tighten things up and you get a really refined message that is entertaining but also educating at the same time, you leave the viewer after one minute or minute and a half going, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe I finished that. I wanna watch it again. Like I wanna consume more videos. Who is this guy or gal? Like I gotta go see if they do more of these videos. I, I think there's something to be said for leaving something to be desired in your videos. Thank you. Um, trying to kind of piece together what I'm feeling like is a little bit of a cadence. So like you, you mentioned why plus how to create change. I'm assuming that a why video is separate from a how video and you're delivering those messages in different pieces of content. So I'm curious, do you follow a theme when you're creating videos in a given week or a given month to where you're you're getting across one message but in different pieces of content? That's a great question, Andrew. Thank you for bringing that up because I'm sure it's on the minds of everyone. So just to re, re like go back and refresh, I was talking about earlier the why content, the how content, and then more of the relationship building, the human emotion side of your content. You really need three elements to do it to do it really well and to convert. And and Andrew was asking. Well, well, what's the cadence there? Like how much do you do the why? How much of the how do you think about throughout the week? The relationships that like, how do you, how do you kind of, what's your operating rhythm? They all run like in tangent with each other in parallel with each other. So it's never like, all right, this week I'm tackling the why. Next week I'm tackling the how. Then I'm going to tackle the relationship and more of the edutainment stuff and, and the emotional stuff. Because some people think that like, oh, your customer's like watching every, and like they're not, right? So it's like, it all works together at the same time. So I may have a video yesterday that was the how, and then today's a why. And then tomorrow's an entertainment video that's more relationship or emotional. Like today, I would consider more of a relationship-based content. 
it was a picture of me and my new business partner and talking about entrepreneurship. I'm just trying to connect with people. It's a good message there. I'm trying to connect with people emotionally, like let them know that we're in this together and that kind of stuff. It's not a why necessarily. It's not a how video or how video. It's more the relationship side, right? So I would say that you would, you're doing all of them at the same time. I would be a little cautious that you don't do too much of the why, not enough of the how, or too much of the how and not enough of the why, or too much of the relationship building and not enough of the other two. So I don't really think about, I just, when I'm recording videos and breaking down, I'm thinking about my live sessions, what I'm gonna cover, I just think about all the different, those three elements. So if you notice, I always take my own advice. If you notice, how did I start off this session? With why edutainment matters, right? Why it matters, why you should be creating it. Because if I don't give you that and give the listeners that, they're like, dude, I don't, why don't I even create the shit? Sounds complicated, I don't wanna do this, right? I need to explain to them why it's so important for you to start thinking about adding this in your content. Then I need to start talking about the how, which is what we did. Then we have some fun with it and we smile and we laugh and we have questions, you know, and so, it kind of almost this live session, you could see the three elements. And so I'm going to break up content from this. Then I'm going to record, you know, tomorrow's my kind of recording day on Wednesday. I'll take an hour and just film eight to 10 videos. And I'm going to look at those. And I always got kind of the top of my list, like why, how relationship. And I just think about like, do I have enough of all three of these in here? Right? So that's how I would think about it. There's no perfect balance. There's no like perfect timing or rhythm. Just make sure that you're incorporating all of them because some people need the how. They've already been convinced of the why. Some people have no clue why they need to do it. So they need to hear about the why. And some people, it's just nice to connect with them on a more human emotional level. And so that works really well too. So, and I, and I would also say that there are certain pieces of content that actually do all three, that showcase the why, the how, and then more of the relationship emotional side, right? So you could combine them, but I would say this, I would definitely would not overthink this, right? I wouldn't be like, oh, I just talked about the why on Monday, now it's Wednesday, I can't release another. No, it doesn't matter, right? So, I, but I would like, I, I think you need to think about all three, but not overthink all three. Cause think about this too. Maybe you're talking about the how three times in a row. And then someone's like, oh, that's really cool. Just, I'm looking at the behind the scenes stuff. Oh, he's showing me how to break down X, Y, and Z. He's showing me how to do this and this. Cool. They like the content, it's good. But then the next day you hit them with a why. And like the reason I talk so much about this is it 10x our business or client's business of ours that look what they did, right? Or here's why this has been such an impact in our business. And then now all that house stuff is like, oh shit, I get it now. I get it, right? And you've showed them how, so now they can actually take action. And vice versa, right? Let's say you start off with a few why in a row. They're now being educated on why this matters in the first place. You've probably created some curiosity. You've piqued their interest. And then the next video they see, or two, three videos later, they see you explaining how to do it. And so again, you're entering the marketplace with a narrative, with a story, with a unique perspective. Example, I think video content should be a 24 seven sales rep for your business, right? So that's my unique perspective or kind of story that I'm gonna tell. I need to back that up with not only what I do, but showing people how to actually do that. Because if I just tell them and then they go, yeah, dude, we tried video, it didn't work, it wasn't successful, well now all of a sudden they think I'm not any good. But if I show them how to exactly how to do it step by step, and then they don't follow that, then that's on them. But I've given them the blueprint, I've given them the, the, the success pattern or workflow or strategy that they can go use. So again, just a, just a summary, I, I wouldn't overthink it, but if you're sitting down to record three videos, five videos, 10 videos, or you're getting ready to have that live session that you're gonna take micro clips from or that podcast, just go through and be like, is there enough of the why, how, and, and uh, relationship in there?